Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph video clip. I'm here today to give you the audio for my weekly lesson. And this week my weekly lesson is entitled The Grand National, where tradition, thrills and wagers converge. Uh, quite an exciting topic. The Grand National took place here, uh, I think it was uh, last weekend. So lots of news coverage, which uh, spurred me to do a lesson about it. Right, so here we are, the weekly lesson audio. The Grand National, where tradition thrills and wagers converge. The Grand National, an esteemed fixture in the world of horse racing, stands as a beacon of British heritage and sporting excellence. It typically takes place annually on the first Saturday in April and is held at Aintree Racecourse near Liverpool, England. This legendary steeplechase has woven itself into the fabric of national identity since its inaugural run in 1839. Steeped in history, the Grand National is more than just a race, it's a spectacle that embodies the essence of competition, courage and camaraderie. Originating as a friendly cross-country challenge among friends, the event has evolved into a global sensation, drawing spectators and punters alike to witness its exhilarating displays of athleticism and skill. Central to the allure of the Grand National is its treacherous course spanning four miles and dotted with 30 daunting obstacles. From the notorious Betcher's Brook to the formidable Canal Turn, each fence poses a formidable challenge, testing the mettle of both horse and rider. It's a true test of bravery and endurance, where only the most skilled and resilient emerge victorious. Throughout its illustrious history, the Grand National has played host to a myriad of memorable moments, from the awe-inspiring feats of red rum to the nail-biting finishes that have left spectators on the edge of their seats. Yet alongside the thrill of the race, another element to add to its allure, the art of gambling. For many, the Grand National is not just a sporting event, but an opportunity to partake in the excitement of wagering. From placing a modest bet with friends to participating in the high-stakes world of bookmakers. The race offers a chance for punters to test their luck and skill in predicting the outcome. The Grand National's association with gambling adds an extra layer of anticipation and excitement to the proceedings. As spectators watch the horses thunder down the home straight, the hearts race not only with the thrill of the chase, but also with the anticipation of a potential windfall. It's a day where fortunes can be won or lost in the blink of an eye, adding an element of drama and suspense to an already electrifying event. But beyond the thrill of the wager, the Grand National remains a celebration of tradition, heritage and the enduring bond between horse and rider. From the ceremonial pageantry to the jubilant scenes in the winner's enclosure, the event captures the imagination and hearts of millions, uniting people from all walks of life in a shared passion for sport and spectacle. In conclusion, the Grand National stands as a testament to the timeless allure of horse racing, where tradition thrills and wages converge 
to create an unforgettable spectacle. From its challenging course to its rich history and the excitement of gambling, the event continues to captivate audiences around the world, ensuring its place as one of the most beloved and celebrated fixtures in the sporting calendar. And there we are. That's the Grand National. Actually, most companies have a little sweep. What I mean by that is the employees usually get together to place a bet to see if they win. It's not really something that's taken seriously. But of course, there are some people here who are very serious about it. And equally, there are some people here who really don't like it because of its association with gambling. Uh, British people can be very moral if you provoke them enough. And uh, you do hear people saying, oh, I don't do those things. I don't like gambling. Religious people usually say that and perhaps people who want to be careful with their money. It has kind of a bad reputation and I think it's because nobody ever wins. But I would say in the UK, of course, somebody wins. <laughs> we just don't know who they are. But also most houses have some bets or something. Unless, of course, they have a reason, like a moral, not to do it. I never do the Grand National. I don't like horse racing. Horse racing is just associated with, um, I don't know, gambling. And uh, it's just something that doesn't resonate with me, you know. And, of course, the National Lottery here in the UK is relatively new. So horse racing was, for many people, one of the only ways of gambling here. Until, of course, we, we have casinos now, but until, of course, we had casinos, which weren't always here. So, yeah, horse racing for the working man was associated um, with winning, losing... And for working people, it's not a good idea, of course, to be gambling, especially if you're low paid. So I think uh, in the old days, many people had problems with this. So it still has that kind of feel to it, that sting that maybe it's not for educated people. Having said all of that, it's very popular and uh, it does remain one of our biggest events. Well, that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let's talk soon. Bye.